Come along, uh, this is Bosch and today I'm going to do like a track breakdown sort of thing. So here's a remix of Rumble that I started. It's not finished yet, but I've kind of covered most of the tune that I wanted to do and then I just need to extend it out. I'll probably make it about four minutes long. But the track itself is quite short, I'm sure it's just shy of three minutes. And I swear music's getting shorter and shorter. But I like I like to hit four minutes with my tracks. It gives you just enough time to mix everything, I reckon, if, you, if you're quick enough. So... First thing I'll do is play you the track. Uh, do I play it from the... Yeah, let's play it from the start. And as I'm doing it, I'll sort of scroll up and down the screen and just sort of, you can see how many, how many different channels there are and stuff. So let's go from the start. So that's all I'm going to give you for now. Uh, you get the idea. The rest of it's pretty pretty similar, to be fair. I need to go in and do some variations and some edits and bit change that second section. But let's start from the start. So we've got our drum group. Nothing on there yet. I would sometimes be tempted to put a... What, not a drum record, what do they call it? Drum bus on there, because it does pump everything up. A bit of compression on the drums is always nice. But at the moment, there's nothing. And I like to try and get it sounding as good as I can without that kind of compression. And then just add it for a little bit of tang later on. So, kick, let's go in with the kick, simple, one kick, and all I've done is put one on the one, one on the three, and then the, th the one on the three, as you can see with the velocity here, velocity is a little lower, so it's going to be a little quieter, and that's going to land on the same beat as the snare, and I just do that to kind of support the snare a bit, just give the snare a little bit of uh, a bit of kick, <laughs> for want of a better word. Uh, and yeah, that's it. No, no effects or anything on there just yet. Snare, pretty similar. No effects just yet. Managed to find a pretty good sort of echoed rim shot. Let me just solo that. Yeah. So yeah, not all that can be said is just finding good samples. You don't really need to do too much in way of effect. I think there's a bit of reverb on that, so let's hear it without. And then with. It's but that that echoes, that reverbs, yeah, minimal, minimal at best. Uh, next is the whoosh, what I'm calling the whoosh here. And these are a bit, the closest thing I can think these are like is like in uh, Bruce Lee films, when he's got like the whip sound before he kicks someone. So when it's like whoosh, uh, that's the kind of effect I've gone for here. So I'll play it on its own. Oh, wrong one. It's very quiet, so you might have to turn it up a little bit. All right, I'll, I'll boost it up for you just so you can hear it there. So there's that one, and then there's another one in the same place, but it's slightly different. Yeah, not much difference, but just enough that it's slightly varied. And that is key. That is one thing I always insist on doing. If you've got, like, say, the same kind of sound, so you've got the same, like, whoosh sound that you're putting in somewhere, or same hi-hat or something, try and change one of them just slightly. It just adds more interest. The listener might not know it. You might not, you know, it might be a very slight change, but that change allows the listener to, to listen to the track for an extra four bars without feeling like it's repeated itself. And then the, how I've created these... If I remember correctly, 
I've taken my rim snare thing, put it onto a new, well, no, I've taken it and what I've done is resampled it. Now, if you don't know how to resample, I'll quickly show you how you can do it. So if you do control and T, that gives you up a new audio track. And then on external in here, you just want to click on resampling. Now, what that'll do is when you record arm that by clicking the thing there, when you record arm that, it's going to record anything that comes out of the master track. So then all you'd have to do is solo the snare and press record and it would record the snare in on its own. So then what I've done instead is, so, so what I've done is recorded the snare, then reverse the audio sample of the snare, so it's backwards, add a reverb, so then if you imagine you've got a reverse snare, so it's going, and then the reverb's at the end of it, re-record that, and then I should probably do a whole video on this to be fair, I will do a whole video on this, and re so record that, reverse it again. So what you've now got is the reverb backwards at the start of the sound. So it's going backwards reverb into the normal snare. So then all I've done is cut the actual snare off that piece of audio there. So it's just the reversed reverb and it gives you that nice lead up to the snare. So let me play that with the snare and let me delete this audio channel because I'll end up leaving that in by accident. And that one, let's have a listen. So there you can hear it just leads up to the snare nicely. Same with that one. Uh, no effects on there. Yep, no effects on the sends either. So that's that. Hats. Now these hats, are, they're not through the main, the like whole of the song. They're just in intro bits and sort of breakdown sections. Now I started out with these in the intro. I cannot help putting something in an intro that makes it mixable. It's a pet peeve of mine. I hate tunes that have no drums in the intro. Maybe I'm a bad DJ, who knows, but it blags my head when there's no drums in the intro or nothing that, you know, lets you know what tempo it is. So just two delayed hi-hats, let's play them fully as they sound. Some Mahler level nine vibes going on. Two slightly different hi-hats, let's take the effects off them. So let's get rid of the compressor and the echo. Yeah, so that's the two. It says shakers, I've called it hats on there. One of them sounds a bit... That sounds more like a hat. That one's definitely a shaker. So then let's put the echo back on. Now the problem I had here, the, the way I wanted it to sound, I wanted that... Um, I wanted the delay to stay loud for a little bit longer. So what I've done is put this compressor on and you'll see when I play it... Can you see here how it's just pushing down the first, like the, the first hit basically of the hat. So that allows me then to push everything else, like turn up the volume of the track, which means you can hear the delay for longer, but you're not hearing the, the initial hi-hat for longer. Hope that makes sense. Uh, and yeah, that's it for that one. I may have EQ'd them as well, have I EQ'd them? Yeah. So again, I've just done a, a low cut, a high pass on those, just to cut out any sub that might be floating around in those samples. Next track is The Crash, and I've done a similar thing with the reverse, although I've just reversed the crash itself. But what I'll say here you want to do, this reversed crash, you don't want to hear the transient, you don't want to hear the, the, the impact or the hit of the crash. Because if you did, let's, let's play it where you hear the, hear the hit. Let's have a listen. I don't want that, let's delete that and have a listen. I don't know if you just heard, there's like a, tss, like just the hit, and I don't want that in there. So I've dragged it a little bit past, so the hit would be around here. I've dragged it past, and then the actual crash where you do want to hear the hit, I've covered it back over. So all you get in here is the tail of the symbol. And then there's just one of those on each, um, what is it, every four, every eight bars? Yeah, every eight bars there's a symbol. Two slightly different symbols. Yeah, not much difference, but there is, there is a slight difference there. And then you can see this automation here. What I've done is I've got a utility, and the automation just turns the utility on and off. But what the utility does, if you look here, swap, it switches the channels. So let's have a closer look at these crashes. Let's just zoom in there a bit. 
So if you look here, the signals are different on either side. So my left signal and my right signal are, are giving me different information. So to combat, I didn't want it all to just sit on one side. I didn't want the, the crashes always to be on the left. So when I turn the utility on, pardon me, I'm going to burp. There we go. Um, when I turn the utility on, it switches the signals. So the first, the reverse crash is going to be more weighted in the right speaker. And then the forward crash is going to be more set in the left. That's the idea anyway. Who knows if it's a good idea? Who knows if you're supposed to do it? But I just like experimenting with these things. And that's the idea that I got um, when I did it. So this one's got no lead up, no lead up. Few of them have, few of them haven't. I kind of, again, mixed it up a bit. Seems like I've got two without and then one with. Two with, yeah, there's no real pattern there. Uh, anything else on there? I don't think there is. No, no effects on. No, no effects, just that utility that switches the, the audio channels. Next up, shakers. Now, there's a little bit more to these. This is two different instruments. So the first one, what I've, I'll, tell, I'll start from the start with this. Firstly, what I've done is loaded in Simpler. Now, I love Simpler. I think it's a really powerful tool. And the slice function is brilliant, especially if you're looking for like bongo loops. What I found is if I use individual bongo sample, samples or percussion in general, it always tends to sound like individual percussion samples just put together in a random order. It's, I find it hard to get one that sounds really natural. Um, and I don't really like using just loops, like just finding percussion loops. So what I'll do is load a, find a percussion loop and load it into Simpler. Put it into slice mode here. And then, you, as you can see, it picks up all the transients. And then you can play them in any order you want then. And it just means you can manipulate the loop easily uh, without having to like physically chop stuff. You can just draw in MIDI and go from there. So let's play... Uh, the first instrument, and I believe this is like a hat with a conga. Let me take the filter off as well, because you'll be able to hear it a bit better. Yeah, let me add the filter back in. Oh, the <laughs> that filter's not actually doing anything, so ignore that. Uh, this I've got this EQ that's doing all the work here, so let's take that out. Yeah, so you can hear there's a definite, there's like a hit of a percussion and uh, a tambourine or a shaker or something in there as well. So let's put that back on. Now the second part of that is, I believe it's more of a, sh is it hi-hats or shakers? There you go. It's called tambourine knock wood shake. So it's a mixture of tambourines and wood, like wood hits from what I can tell. Put them together because that's how they play. They're playing the same pattern and they just play together. And again, all I've done here is... Oh no, there's more to that. So all I've done on these channels, I've EQ'd them as so. You can see there, this bit here. Big low cut and a little high cut on there as well. I've left the highs in on those though. And then on the master, let's take everything off and let's hear it from the start without any of the effects. All right, let's add the reverb. Just a little room reverb in the background, not too much. Filter delay. And then the EQ. Again, the EQ won't be doing too much because I'm pretty sure it's this. Oh, yeah, the, the main bit the EQ is doing this, it removes this nasty frequency here. It would it really pranging my ears out, so I got rid of that. The filter delay, I like to. I don't know, the, the left and right signal, the main, the, the center signal, I like to make more prominent and make the, the, the sort of the ground for the delay. And then the other, the other sides. I tend to be a little liberal with and sort of pull them down in the mix a bit, play around a bit more with the, the rhythms and the EQ and stuff like that. Uh, but the main one for me is the centre one. Uh, yeah, and that's it for the shakers. Don't be scared to pair up, group up, especially with hats. You cannot go wrong with anything hats and shakers wise, group them up. Put, I like to do like say a two beat pattern. So on the one and the three with a hat and then do a four beat pattern, one, two, three, four with a different hat. And then shakers, maybe an eight beat pattern, uh, eighth notes. 
just so it sounds like there's like just loads of different um, different hats and high end sort of stuff going on. Right, next is the bass. This is just a sine wave, just a sub, as far as I'm aware. It may have a little, yeah, it's just a sub, that one. Yeah, not much to that, literally just a sub. And then the second one is a little different. This one has got an LFO, 16 note LFO now. This is because I wanted to kind of reference the the bit after he says killers in the jungle. Bum, 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 bum. Like that. Bum, 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 bum. I wanted to kind of reference that a little bit. So it's not in the same place. It starts from the start of the bar. But it's just a little bit slightly. Look, amount here, 20% rate 16s. Just ever so slightly wobbly bass. It's like um, you can see here I've got all the oscillators selected, so the LFO changes the pitch of all the oscillators. And then, yeah, now that's it. Yeah, so all the oscillators, even though it's only on one, all the oscillators are doing a slight pitch variation, like a tremolo almost. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it's only slight, and you'll have to, if you're listening on a, a laptop or... A phone, you'll have to put headphones in to hear that. But yeah, just two different basses there. And that's pretty much the same all the way through the track. So, let's get to the musical bits. What have we got here? We've got the piano skank. Now, let's hit listen to this as it's heard in the tune. And then let's go through and strip the effects and see what we're left with. Oh, it's just an EQ. Oh, no, EQ and a reverb. Oh, let's turn that audio chain off. Right, so this piano is made up of two sections. The first being this ever so slightly distorted section. So you can hear see dry wet 3%. It's barely on. That cabinet's actually not on at all, so let's delete that. <laughs> Uh, and this EQ is not on at all either. I don't know where... Yeah, let's put that on. So that... You can hear there's a slight bit of fuzz. Let me turn that fuzz right up. And then turn it back down slowly, you'll be able to hear it. Yeah, it just adds a little bit of like, what I believe to be like, it just makes it sound a bit more sort of authentic and dirty as well. And then the second channel is... Oh, I don't know why that's turned off. So that's the same piano turned right down and it's going through the Convolution Reverb, Springs, Spring Reverb, and it's the Swiss Echo Rev R Delay L2. Um, no idea what that all means. I'm assuming it's to do with the right channel and the left channel and all this business. Uh, I've just dropped that on there, turned it right down, EQ'd it a bit as well. Again, just taking that low end out. That's actually, that's EQing the whole thing, is that. Uh, so yeah, that's that channel on its own. And if you look, I've got the reverb set to 100%. So all you're hearing is reverb there. And then let's put them together. And then... The stab in the chorus. Is it the chorus, the jungle bit? I don't know. Let's have a listen. And all that is, is the, the same chord that we start with, which is C sharp minor, and then I've just doubled it up. So it's two octaves of C sharp minor, two octaves apart, basically. Oh, that's spread really low. Yeah, yeah, see, I've got that really low octave there. I wanted to, I just wanted it to sound really sort of, I don't know, just like a janky sort of bang, like a, uh, like almost like a horror sort of sound. And then I've let that sort of delay and feedback out as well for a bit. Let's hear it in context with the tune, shall we? Yo, listen, yeah, that. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Kill 
Yeah? So that's the skank. And that sits on beats two and four. I'm going to go into the rhythm of all these things that are key for reggae music. So this is on one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The next bit, it's called melody, but it's not a melody. It is, let's rename that actually. Bubbling. So this is something I like to put in all my tracks, a little organ bubble. When required, anyway, if it fits, I'll put it in there. But let's have a listen. Yeah, so that's that's just a little organ, and that's landing on the and. So it's one and two and three and four. So we've got something on the two and four, we've got something on the and notes. Let's have a little look at how this organ's set up. And again, E piano crep slide, it's just a preset, one of the Ableton, Ableton stock presets. The EQ's doing nothing. <laughs> I told you I'm halfway through this tune. This EQ's there and it's not doing anything. Shall I, I'll leave it for now. Let's leave it. And then a bit of reverb. So let's take that off. Yeah. And that's about it. And then I've just, I think I must have tweaked around with this a little bit. Um, just to get it to sound how I wanted, but that's that's completely subjective. Whatever kind of sound you're after, just tweak with these macros. They're usually pretty good controls, and get whatever sound you want. So next is the clav. Now this is what fills out note one. So you get your clav on note one, your skank on two and four, your snares on three, and then your uh, bubble is on and and and. So in theory, it'll go. Clav, piano, skank, piano, clav, piano, skank, piano, something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But basically, in reggae, they like to fill up, I feel like they like to fill up each sort of rhythmic part. So every beat, every, like almost every 16 or 8th note at least, has something on it. So you've got your kick and your snare on 1 and 2, uh, 1 and 3, piano on 2 and 4, bubbling in between those and then the clav is on the start and then it's also backing up the piano. So let's listen to the clav. Oh no, this clav. And I feel like that the low notes here, these, these lower octave notes, really sort of assist the groove. It kind of makes you, with it being a longer note, it leans in towards the next note. So it's like... You can't see me, but I'm, I'm doing like a sliding sort of motion. It kind of brings you in to the next note. I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'm chatting shit, who knows. So then let's pair that with the piano, because these chords here are on the same thing as the piano. Yeah? Let's have a look at that, what we've got any effects on, yeah, again, just cutting that low, that's my standard thing, just get rid of all that, any sub in there. <coughs> Sorry, I had a massive subway earlier. And, again, a little bit of reverb, so let's hear it dry. So there's a little bit of reverb there from somewhere else, as, where's that coming, that might be on the, ah, I think that's the release here, that's where that's coming from. And then reverb. Not not much there if there is any at all to be honest. What's that? Thirteen? Yeah, it's really low in the background there. Uh, and that's that. What I'm going to say at this point is, if there's anything in this video so far that you want me to explain further, please get in touch. Message me in the comments. Hit me up. At the moment, this channel's not big enough that I can't reply to everyone. I will absolutely reply to every single comment that I get on this video, and I may even do a video responding as well. So please, if you've got any questions about the way I do things, hit me up. So next we've got the acapella. Now, the acapella is, I've done it by uploading the track into one of those AI acapella makers. So I think it's Moises or lalalal.ai, one of those, uh, and it's stripped the acapella. So if I solo it, you'll hear, you can tell it's been ripped off the track. Like there's, there's artifacts and stuff in there. So anyone who's used any of those AI AI audio splitters, they're really good, but when it comes to bass, the bass, I think, strips or tends to pull a lot more artifacts out of the vocal. Because when he's when he's doing the Killers in the Jungle bit, when there's no bass, it's clear. 
But then if you listen to the start, it's not that clear. Have a listen. We're going for them life. When I step into the jungle, say there was no group up. You take that never I move off. up, never gonna win a war rumble. But when I come through, you know what I love to do. I send shots for your team and leader. I make a witness, decide to vacate the wars, getting sweet just like a Ribena. Yo, listen, you hear that? Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Killers in the jungle. Yo, listen, you hear that? Killers in the jungle. Yeah, so I've just, all I've got is that reverb on there, which is coming from this uh, send or return A. So that's where that reverb is. And again, not much of it on there. Just enough to, to gel everything together. Uh, what else have we got? So here we start getting into like dubby effects. And you may have seen this delay here, Skeng. This is one of my sends. And it's just got the, it's just got, what is it? A one eighth echo dotted. So it's sort of off beat. You can see here, these white dots are your beats. And you'll see it falls in between like every one and a half uh, instead of every every one. So let's have a listen to how that sounds on this little end bit. So all I've done is just stripped it off this little end bit here. Now, something interesting to note here is what I've done with the delay. Let me switch to the other oh, caps lock. Let me switch to the other view. I've activated the send on the return. Now what this does is send the <laughs> sends the return back into itself. So it starts to feed back. And that's why instead of a clean delay, you start to get it sounding like it's picking up feedback and building and getting louder. And then I've automated that. The higher that goes, the more feedback you're going to get and the more it's going to change the delay rather than just having the same delay sound getting quieter and quieter it'll amplify it and build it and repeat it through itself and you get all kinds of craziness going on uh while i'm here i might as well explain this so this is an echo a filter because i was going to put an lfo and a filter on there to sort of change the sound a bit more but i've, I've not done that yet and i don't know if i'm gonna and then just a limiter now the limiter is important because when you do that feedback thing with turning this on, which all you do is just right click on them and do enable send. When you turn that on way higher than that, it gets loud. So you need to put a limiter on there just to stop it distorting basically. Uh, so let's go back to here. The second one is I kind of approached the dubbing, the like dub delays from a different angle. So I've got the vocal track here. And then what I've done is turn the volume right down. And then on these little sections, turn the volume up. And then the delay is permanently on that track. So let's have a listen to how this sounds. You won't be able to hear anything until I hit one of these one of these peaks here. Oh, and it'd help if I'd solo it, wouldn't it? Let's try again. So I'm going to leave it now and listen to what happens. Yeah, you hear it started getting louder? That's because of the send. The send sending into itself. I think that's it for the vocals, pretty much. Let's have a look. What's on there? Nothing, just an EQ. Again, look at EQ on everything. Yeah, all good. Now, this bit, this is taken from... So when I took the acapella off the track, it must have picked this up as part of the vocal because it's, it's just uh, an effect from the track, a sound, a sample from the tune. Oh god, I haven't soloed it. Let's have another go. And that just every four bars on the on the half of the first bar. And I feel like when you're doing a bootleg, it's good to try and take as many pieces from the original tune as you can. As many as are feasible anyway that sound good. Just to sort of reference back to it, really. Now, I think there's just a reverb on there. Let's turn that off and have a listen. Yeah, dry, and then, yeah, it fills it out a bit more, gives it a bit more space. Next channel. This is just like a Foley sound. So this is just, what's it called? Kaju Sound of Jungle. Now this sound I got from a website called freesound.org. And it's a really good website for Foley recordings, samples, um, there's loads of weird stuff on there. I find it's a bit, bit more varied than Splice and a bit more, I'm going to put it, 
I don't know, just a bit more random. It's more people's own recordings that they've put up there. So let's have a listen. Now, let me turn it up so you can hear it. Let me put it on like... Yeah, so all I've done with that, let's turn all these off. So let's hear it. So this is what it sounds like on its own with no effects. Yeah, so let's play it again, but let's add each effect in slowly. Right. So you can hear it sounds like a radio a bit. Gate gets rid of all that fuzz, just gives us the birds. And then the echo. Yeah. And that's that really. That stays, I think, well, that at minus 29. That stays really low under the track. Let's listen to it and see if you can hear it. Hang on. I only put that as well in the jungle section. So when he's saying kill us in the jungle, that is only in that section. There's a little Easter egg in there. I just like to put jungle sounds in there. So let's have a listen in context with the track. Yo, listen, yeah hear that? Kid is in a jungle. Kid is in a jungle. Kid is in a jungle. Yeah, so you, you can just hear it in there. Uh, but it just fills out the track a bit. It's a nice, nice little addition. I'm happy with it. Right, okay, next we've got the risers. Let's listen to the risers all together. Okay, and let's go through these one by one. The Siren Long, this one. That is just a triangle wave with a little bit of a sine wave pushed into it as well. Not much there, just a bit both on number one tuning. Standard setup here and then just a bit of reverb. Let, listen to it without the reverb. Big difference. Now, this utility is just allowing me to do a fade at the start. So let's take, let's take them all off and listen to how it sounds. And then put the reverb on. Yeah, it just sounds loads better with that reverb on. And it's quite wet on that reverb as well. And then, like I say, the utility just allows me to do that fade there. Now, next one. Now, this is audio. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to go into how I made this. I'll tell you how I made it. I'm not going to show you how I made it on this video because I'm getting to the end of how long I want it to be. But I've done a similar thing. So I got a, an operator, put a triangle wave on. I like the triangle wave for dub sirens, and it's because I used to have one of the Korg, what did they call it now, Korg Mono something. I'll put a picture of it up there, but there's a Korg little device that does a, a dub, like a dub siren almost, and that uses a triangle wave, and it sounds sick. So if ever I'm using a dub siren, I always change this to triangle. And then I've just put an LFO on it. Uh, again, this isn't that one, this is the other one, but I've I just put an LFO on it, but the problem was the LFO wasn't phased properly. So it's, it didn't start the up and down in the right place. I wanted it to go from the bottom. So woo, woo, woo. it started about halfway up one of the curves. So it was like, and it stopped in the wrong place. So what I did, I did the resampling trick again, recorded a longer section than what I wanted of just the siren going off. So look, it's a little bit longer there. And it's a little bit longer there. And then that allowed me to be able to cut it exactly where I wanted it. So I got the exact up and down cycle of the LFO that I wanted. Oh, wrong one. Let's have a listen. Yeah. And that's just two bars before the start. Uh, I, don't, oh, I don't think I did what else with that. And then final bit is the atmosphere. So this is just, again, I got this from freesound.org, and this is just, uh, what is it called? Forest Rain on Plants and Birds 2 by Kyle. Um, and let's have a listen to this. Let's take any effects off it first. Let's turn it up for you as well. And solo in it would be good. Oh, and let's turn that off as well. I didn't, I didn't even realise I'd sent that to the delay. So... So that's Forest Rain on Plants and Birds. What I've done with it is EQ'd it. Yeah, so we were just getting that top end crackle. And this sounds a little bit like vinyl crackle, which I kind of like, with birds mixed in there. So 
that, as you can see, that just plays all the way through the track and it's really low. So I think it will be 40, minus 40, let's put it at 45, I can't remember exactly. But like now, in my headphones, I can't hear that. But let me just turn it up. Yeah, but that runs all the way under the track and it's just a nice little layer of, like I say, it sounds almost like vinyl crackle. And because the track is jungle themed, kind of, then it just adds another jungly layer to it. And yeah, I think that's everything, to be honest. This audio track looks like it's got nothing in. I don't think it's for anything. I think we're using it to show something when I previously tried to record this video. So let's delete that. And yeah, that's it. Um, let's have a look at my mastering chain. I've been messing around. As I'm making a track, if I, if I sort of run out of ideas for that current session, I do tend to have a little mess around and master it and see how it sounds. This is my mastering chain. It's just a compressor with a makeup gain on. EQ, this number three here is just kind of to make my snare pop through a bit, a little bit of extra high end added on there and cut everything below 30 hertz because this is where you're going to start getting, it's just junk frequency really. I don't think speakers can efficiently play 30 hertz without it sounding like separate sort of things. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there because I could talk forever, but that is my rumble bootleg. Uh, if you want this when it's finished, put it in the comments. Any comments saying that, then I will probably be more likely to finish it sooner. If you've got any other questions, hit me up in the comments as well. Also, last question. Are you bothered about me putting a picture, an image, video image of myself in the corner of these videos? I don't really care because it's not important that you see me, but some people might like to see me talking while I'm explaining stuff. So again, hit me up in the comments and let me know. I'm going to end it there. Full stop. Finished. My name is Bosch and this has been my Rumble Bootleg Breakdown. Thanks for watching, see you next time.